Hey guys, good morning. Good morning Ciao. and happy Saturday, everybody. Ciao. Hola. Hola. Happy, happy Saturday, everybody. May 8th, another episode of the Cult of Culture Bar Sport. We are live on Facebook on our The Cult of Culture page, on Italian Serie A League page, and uh, wherever. And we're happy to welcome you guys for another talk about football as usual. Number 20, eh? Number 20. Number, number 20. 20. Number 20. A big number, eh? Exactly. Yes, All exactly. 200. One more that Inter Scudetto. <laughs> you can say, you can tell me congratulations, guys. You can say. <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. Again, guys, there's no real Inter supporter, I would say, among this group, but we have to pay tribute to the winner of the Italian uh, Serie A 1990, uh, nine, 2020-2021, actually. Yeah. I'm going back with my <laughs> mind. <laughs> Scudetto number Patoni. 19. That was exactly. Year, no? <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. So we had a very interesting week in the world of Italian football, which started yep. last week, of course, last Sunday, with the celebration for the Scudetto, a title that, I mean, let's be frank, he was never in doubt since probably three, four months, right? Yeah. A bit less. A bit, a bit less, less, I think, two, two months maybe. But who would have yeah. thought that out of the big leagues, Inter will be the first champion? I, I would have never thought, if you tell me two months ago, out of all the first leagues, considering that uh, Atletico have 12 points gap, you know, Manchester City, and, and that Inter will be the first champion in Europe. Wow. Even before Bayern and everything. Amazing. True. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And actually, oh, consider the, also the um, AC Milan exploit that they had in the, the beginning of the season and until... Uh, sorry, Matteo, don't, don't look at me like this. <laughs> we, <laughs> don't look at me like this. We, we, we were expecting a Juve Milan tomorrow for the title, you know? This Juve yeah. Milan for the title. Yeah, no, for the title, uh, I don't know. Because Juventus was already a bit behind... Uh, behind... Uh, I don't know what yeah, the card time. Was yeah. the card. But <laughs> let's talk about the quiz, shall we? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to switch the top. We should, we should. Do we, we have should. a quiz? <laughs> we have a quiz, but no, uh, yeah, I mean, it's true, guys. To be honest, and I think I mentioned here in one of our past episodes of the, the Bar Sport, there was a moment in the season where I really believed that Milan could have won the Scudetto. And this guy who just told us, good morning, guys, Renato, who's a fellow AC Milan supporter, I'm sure we had a lot of conversation, the two of us, about, you know, maybe this is the right time. Uh, you know, we're going to break the drought. Uh, so there was a moment where we believed it was possible. But then he went back to business. And, uh, I mean, congratulations to Inter. They were the most consistent team. They work on their weaknesses. Uh, Mr. Conte, honestly, he might have a very difficult personality, but at the end of the day, what he made with that roster is just amazing. So full props to him and uh, well, congratulations to the new Italian champions. Yeah, actually. So can we move on now? <laughs> <laughs> I actually was hoping that he was finishing the big event to cycle in Serie A. As it was started, like uh, with the AC Milan back there in the in the first place, but unfortunately, <clears throat> the hated cousins of uh, Inter <laughs> actually they made like the the best championship they, they could do, and uh, I would say that uh, okay, I join uh, Matteo to the uh, to the congratulations for sure, but I have to say that uh, Inter has been the only team that did not take any excuses uh, on uh, injuries, on the COVID uh, pandemic. They didn't have them. How can they uh, take excuses? They don't have injuries. Well, they have Sensi. No, they, they have, have, they have, have oh, That was no. actually... Not, not as much as, their not as many as uh, Napoli, that's for sure. That's, uh, and uh, or Juventus or Parma or, or Milan. AC Milan. <laughs> yeah, but Juventus had also better, uh, a better team uh, to, be, to build up. Anyways, they've been a bit luckier, I would say. But they didn't start the same uh, way as, as C Milan did. Uh, but they've oh, been consistent. True. They've been uh, they've been consistent, and uh, consistency paid off. Yeah, I agree. And we, uh, by the way, Calcio Calcio said that uh, Inter was going to win the league uh, a long time ago. 
We need yeah, to yeah, pay tribute to ourselves. So oh, exactly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can clap for ourselves. We did get a prediction right for once. For once, yes. We got for once. <laughs> for once. <laughs> for once. I All right. It's interesting to see that, uh, well, Inter next season will face, uh, you know, the season of the second star. They can, that's the point, because they're 19 uh, uh, Scudettos, and they can have the two stars on uh, on the top. And that's I was expecting Matteo wearing the league. <laughs> oh, man, no, no. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it live. <laughs> No. One inter jersey is enough, you know, in this. Uh, we in this we can show the picture, but we are your friends, and we are not going to do it, right, uh, Diego? Uh, <laughs> yes, we can. Uh, no, I don't have the picture. I don't have the picture. I actually <laughs> deleted no it. No picture uh, about that. That never happened. You know, yeah, let's do because... something. Let's let's do something live, Matteo. You put the inter jersey. I will go. I'll put the Milan jersey. Like this, we're equal. <laughs> let's do it. Can now, we just? Our do... spect- the... <laughs> So you were talking about the quiz, Matteo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's do the quiz. Let's do the quiz. Okay. So you know mean. what? Uh, yes, I have. Okay. He, here's a good one to change the topic. So uh, I have the most <laughs> difficult quiz ever. I'm sure that nobody will get this one. All right. No, I, th- I think the three of us wants you with <laughs> in their jersey now. I was getting close. Getting very close. Very close. So yeah. what, what, what? I don't know. There's some noise in the communication, right? So maybe I have network issues. Let, let's do this. I'm gonna share the uh, the quiz, and then I'm gonna leave you guys debate about what what team is this, because as I said, I think it's the most difficult one that we ever show oh, nice. in our nice. bar sport. So guys who are live on Facebook, who are following us, see if you get this one right. I'm going to give two hints about this. Oh, wow. The first one is that, and this is just to make things a bit more difficult, they were wearing the second jersey, not the first one. Mm. And the second tip that I can give you guys is that they are... Uh, there is one player that you might recognize. Valderra. There is one player we could, one <laughs> player. Exactly. Who is a very famous area coach. Is there, there you Gasperini. go. I just said Gasperini. Don't ask me why. And uh, Mato, you, you need to share it. Why are you showing the major I, I, I see your chest. <laughs> I, I, I see your chest. Really are you not like... sh- oh, oh, okay. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Got it. Now you got it, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, we got... Uh, uh, a qu- yes. There's Allegri. Oh. I, I can recognize Allegri in well, anywhere. I can <laughs> recognize... Uh, is it that... Paolo Moriero? It's, it's Allegri. Maybe it's Cremonese again. No, no, maybe not. But it's, it's Allegri. No, it's Ooh. not Allegri. Guys. In the meanwhile, Matteo just went and walked away... Uh, and uh, <laughs> said, you, you do the show and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it was not that. Was, uh, it was well, this is Perugia 100%. This is Perugia 100%. The first one is Taibi. See, si, si, si. just but I'm Taibi? just guessing. No, uh, no, one no, player no. is a really famous, is Allegri. Is Allegri, come on, where do you the card? That's Allegri, pretty easy. So, have a look at all the teams. So, it's Ancona, played. it's Ancona, not Perugia. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, I <you> didn't. <laughs> Guys, please take a, a screenshot of this. Oh uh, man, we're gonna put it Why as a banner on Bro, our page. So, Matteo, um, we are showing yeah. everything uh, that we don't need to show. <laughs> what are we showing here? <laughs> Mamma mia, Matteo. so I think it was Ancona, uh, Allegri. Uh, so Allegri played for Napoli, I think, in '98. So that could be uh, '95, '94. Just guessing. I would say a little bit because less. the logo seems Perugia, though. But it could be uh, Ancona because also Ancona has a similar uh, thing with the, the white horse. I think they have a, a white That's horse. True. Kind of. That's true. So what do you say, Ancona or Perugia? One of the two is right. An- I'm Ancona, one hundred percent. I'm going to say Ancona, one hundred percent. 
Ancona. Carlos, what do you say? Ancona or Perugia? I think Carlos has... Uh, I think Carlos uh, was uh, Carlos the is, uh, oh, looking for the, 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 the EC Milan jersey. Of course. Yeah. So we're going to do a, a swap. Well, luckily, I don't have any... Uh, luckily, I cannot exchange uh, uh, jersey mm. with uh, Paolo. <laughs> I moved, uh, <laughs> luckily, I don't have... And we, we, lost lost friend, friend, okay. we lost the fan. <laughs> we lost the fan. Ah, I'm the things you. we do for the audience, right? Yeah, but why are you doing that? <laughs> Which audience? Because your audience is a similar <laughs> audience. <laughs> oh, oh no! Okay, no. So this is the Montolivo just... one. So yeah, balance. Oh God! Balance. Now we're balanced. Now we're balanced. <laughs> But guys, I, I've ordered a few Roma jerseys now that uh, I, I heard some new guys in town from next season. So oh, yeah, from new. Portugal, true, someone from Portugal. True, true, true. Exactly. Hey, we need to talk about that. That was a big bomb dropped on the Serie A. A, a, a very nice one, a very positive one, I would say. Yeah. Uh, but just, you know, to close the topic, and now Renato loves Carlos, <laughs> of course. You know, he's so, you know, he's so changing with his alliances. And I just wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Carlos, which uh, which player is this uh, shirt? Montolivo. No, no name. Oh, no, it's not guys, no name. you remember, you remember Montolivo, this jersey uh, when they changed they changed the the badge? I love this season, this jersey season. It was beautiful. I think it was like the a hundred anniversary or of uh, something yeah. because that that's the badge of Milan, of the city of Milan, not not the club, the city yeah. of uh, Milano. And, and the, I think with it the was the season Italy, here right. with the flag is beautiful jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I create two monsters today. Renato, you have three monsters now in this. Uh, uh, you have three monsters. Yeah. Who's the third one? Who's the third uh, one? You. <laughs> you. You. Regardless. But regardless. Matteo, Matteo, can I say, as a partner, it's awful to see you in that oh, I know, jersey. I mean, <laughs> it's really awful. I mean, also the, also oh, the shape I... of the jersey, I think. Yeah, that, it, uh... it, it, it's really... And there is no Scudetto there. Indeed. indeed. This must be from uh, Oba Martins. So season 2003-2004 uh, or 2004-2005. It might be around those, those years. Anyway, yeah. hey, guys, just to close the topic on the quiz, because once again, I need to congratulate Diego and uh, Paolo for getting our quiz wrong. They never <laughs> disappoint me with that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I didn't say, I didn't say, which team yeah, did you say? You cannot say, say anything Diego? now. Okay. You cannot no. say anything now. No, no, no. Oh. Me, Carlos didn't I hear it. I don't know. I don't know the club. I didn't hear the club. Uh, come know, on. You're the changing club. Here's the club again. What do you think? And moreover, it, do you recognize club, this guy? Which club Diego and Paolo said? Which so club? Diego and Paolo said he was Ancona. But we guessed the player. And then, Maybe. but with these <laughs> colors, red, and you said the second jersey. This is the second jersey, which makes things a bit more difficult. Uh, but red. again, you should be able to recognize this guy here. Yeah, so this is what? Perugia? See, Carlos. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Carlos. You heard me. <laughs> no, I we promise you, get... this jersey, I, I have to go home to take it. Look, <laughs> outside to the garden. Home. home. Carlos, I, we need to I, give I, you an Italian passport, a honorary Italian passport. <laughs> no, no, we should I take know a guy from Juventus Paratici. He's really good with passports. <laughs> we should take, <laughs> we should so take off the Italian passport good, from Paolo and Diego. Right? And that, and that, oh, been proved, that, by way. Diego. that has been proved, and uh, there's a fact. Uh, Matteo, a fact. so if that is Perugia, because or one or the other, uh, yeah. the, the goalkeeper would be Taibi? No, the goalkeeper is no, a guy named Taibi. Alexander Ko Kocic. Uh, and I'm asking oh, okay. our no, no, no. Serbian friends to correct us with the pronunciation, which most likely is wrong. Uh, he played for Perugia only one season, and it was a pretty good one. So I really don't understand why he was benched at some point. Uh, it was the first time... Oh, the season was 1996-1997. So it was the first time of Perugia back to Serie A after more than two decades, I think. And, it was uh, the Gaucci era. It was the Gaucci era, of course. Look at that. What is it? Serbia. Serbia, Ser Serbia. <laughs> exactly. Right, okay. Alexander right. What? Alec, what, what was his name? Alexander what? Alexander Kocic, or the Serbian one. And he also played for the national team for a while. 
Well, it was, was like Allegri the, the was Allegri the Allegri, Allegri was the player, of course. And okay, uh, at least this yeah. one we guessed it right. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Allegri was. That's what we did. But I, I'm I'm trying to understand. Did I got right a, a list here? Uh, wait, which season did you no, say? No, I think no. I, think no, no. I said that not. Napoli was around 98, uh, and then I said around uh, 95, 96, or something like that. Uh, it's um, in between, between right? right? It's in between. You always get close to that, but no, 1996, 1997. What the hell? <clears throat> it's, it's, it's okay. uh, for sure, there's some uh, some agreement uh, some under the hood, that. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> to make yeah. it to make it fail every time. <laughs> there's always like. Okay, okay. Anyways, so, uh, so, are you gonna uh, get off that? I'm gonna ask you, or... ask you, well, I don't know. I think, if, you know, we're in the middle of it. I think we should just <laughs> bear it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, my tribute to, to Inter will continue, at least for today. And then I'm gonna switch back to normal from the following week, when hopefully we're gonna be able to talk about something different than Inter winning a Scudetto. Uh, I know that Diego had a couple of questions regarding Inter's title. And I think the most yeah. uh, important one is, uh, hey, are we up to another cycle here? Are they going to open a cycle, probably under guidance of Conte, or somebody can break this uh, domination uh, right from the next season? What do you guys think? I think well, it, it depends more on what's going to happen in the other in the other teams than, than Inter itself, I think. Because obviously, I think some old players are, are leaving, right? Like Ashley Young, for example. And uh, But it's going to happen. It's I think it depends more of how Milan and Juve will rebuild. And now everybody's talking about Roma. I, I, I don't see Roma yet as a contender. But uh, mm. I think the rebuilding, it's obviously it has to be bigger in Juve and Milan than in Inter because it, it kind of works, right? But... Uh, but uh, yeah, there is two, three players. I think they might leave. No, also the older players, like I mentioned, Young, maybe Perisic. I don't know if he will continue or not. And uh, but it could. Be, I think definitely they are the big, big favorites to win the Scudetto next year. Big favorites. I agree with. Uh, I agree yeah. with Carlos. It's. Uh, I I believe the only issue that my inquiry is uh, actually the a club level is their financing not being really uh, weak at the moment. Uh, but for the rest, I think when you get a, a, a person like Marotta, a Conte, people that they know how to win, uh, uh, you know, in the back end of the, of the team, uh, I think everything that you can uh, bring to the team is just success. Uh, I strongly believe Juvent Juventus will not be able to get back next season uh, as they were in the last uh, 10 seasons. Uh, strong in the last nine, sorry. Uh, I think uh, AC Milan uh, could grow a little bit more than uh, this season. They have a little bit more experience. Uh, they, you know, there is also Ibrahimovic uh, 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 again. Uh, um, so I see like a Scudetto going uh, in Milan next year uh, as well. It's things are not going to change because, as Carlo is saying, uh, you, you don't know. Maybe you know Messi is going to buy uh, his house in Napoli, and he gets love in love with the city, <laughs> and Messi will start playing for my team. We don't know, so there is a lot of variables still. But I believe Inter, uh, it's up to open a cycle. That's uh, they have uh, all the elements for doing so. Yeah, I agree, guys. In my, Maybe not like uh, season long, but in, in my opinion, no, I would say yeah. that. Uh, uh, it's really hard to say when a cycle uh, is started. They have all the, the I'll say, all the... Uh, the ingredients. Like the ingredients. elements. Yeah. yeah. Really, thank the you elements. for the suggestion. <laughs> the, the ingredients to, to make it. Uh, they have really young players, so they can uh, rely on them as well. I just mentioned Barella, just to say one. Um, Bastoni, for example. There are a lot of, uh, say, Mm, chances that they can start a really good uh, cycle or at least they could uh, aim to Scudetto for sure for the next year. Um, they also are a bit in trouble in terms of uh, financial uh, stuff. Zanetti himself said something about, uh, about this uh, yeah. last week. <laughs> but I would say I, I do not believe that the other teams will not get back on track. And starting from Juventus for sure, and uh, AC Milan as well. Um, this has been, uh, I would say, a, um, 
anomaly season, I would say, for how it's been uh, going through. Uh, but I mean, Inter has all the ingredients to do a cycle. The problem is that uh, you don't know if it's a cycle until it's a cycle. And this is like, yeah, uh, <laughs> and this is actually a question that is based on what has been uh, done so far. So if you see before that, there was another Inter cycle uh, given to the, the lack of some real competitor. Last year, last nine years was something like this also with uh, with Juventus. Maybe the only one contender that could uh, say face Juventus was Napoli in the last years. So long story short, now if uh, all the teams are going to get back on track, either there will be a really great clash, and I, and I hope that it's going to be like this because there's going to be a great show for uh, the football lovers, or if there is no real contender, that's a good room for uh, Inter to go through with the cycle. That's uh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. And you know uh, what is interesting, Paolo, uh, when it comes to the contenders, uh, uh, we saw mm -hmm. already this season uh, that uh, and Carlos was pointing out before, uh, in Italy, there were contenders, uh, but uh, it's just that the contenders, uh, they basically how to eliminate themselves rather than uh, uh, Inter eliminating them. It's true that Inter, they won against everyone. Dries, they won against Napoli, they yeah. won against Juventus, AC Milan, so they won the big games yeah. uh, in that way. But at the same time, we can uh, surely say that uh, uh, like a team like uh, Napoli, AC Milan, uh, and uh, uh, Juventus, uh, uh, they did their own, their own mistakes. They lost their games. Yeah. Napoli, they lost, uh, just to say, four points against a Swallow and uh, last week uh, uh, against Cagliari, uh, one was 94 uh, minutes uh, and the other one was 96 minutes, uh, you know, uh, six minutes after uh, the extra times. Inter, it's always been there. Uh, they never, never lose concentration. They never lose the focus. So they've always been there. And, I mean, this uh, year. This year, this season. Okay. But then, uh, if you remember, uh, and I'm sorry to point it out that to you, Paolo, but Bastoni launching uh, uh, that way, you know, uh, I think it was Lukaku against Juventus. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, you know, the picture of what uh, was uh, Inter this year. Uh, Inter uh, beating that way, Juventus, uh, yeah, was I, the, I was the sign you. I do agree with was, you because actually that's the foundation that's of that's the foundation of uh, a cycle because if you have really good players that, and young players Barella, we have Barella, a suggestion Bastoni, Sorry, yeah. and uh, yeah it was Barella going uh, but, but yeah, scoring yeah. non Luca but yet, yet again actually that's uh, even more a perfect picture of what we were saying before like they have the exactly. ingredients to do that do we did the uh, oh, will they do it <laughs> We don't know mm. because actually it all depends also on the contenders. On the contenders, yeah. right. If the right, contenders right, right. are going to get weak as they were in the in the past season for uh, Juventus or for Inter uh, back in time, I think it's going to be a cycle. Otherwise, it's really tough for the... To me. Yeah. yeah. And, and by Mateo, the way... Sorry, Paul. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> Scudetto will stay in Milan, in yeah. <laughs> and you know what? It's funny. Yes. Let's be, <laughs> let, let me be a little bit... Uh, this is a... a, a Silly parenthesis. Uh, uh, in 2000, 2001, we have Jubileo and uh, Roma and Lazio won the Scudetto. Now San Siro is going to be a rebuild. It's one of the most important uh, stadium in Italy and in Europe, I would say, or in the world. And uh, Inter AC Milan, they will pass the, uh, the marathon. But Actually, think... There was a really interesting article on Repubblica last week about... You see? about uh, how many uh, you can actually bet on uh, inter winning the scudetto again in 2030 because mm -hmm. they have this kind of uh, frequency oh, every 10 years, yeah. every ten years every... yes so oh, wow. we, we, we must bet we yeah that's bet interesting. and see again in 10 years uh, here on the cult of culture you guys mentioned the contenders which is a, is a very good point actually and uh, i i also think that inter are really up to a cycle they have the potential to, you know, win for two, three, four seasons. Maybe not more than that. Things can change a lot. Uh, but at the same time, I think next season is going to be extremely interesting because if you ask me about the contenders, wow, I'm, I'm not able to tell you. There's so many variables. Juventus is a total mystery what's going to happen to me. Uh, yeah. They're surely up to some uh, restructuring, some refundation. 
uh, I don't think Zoo. Pirlo will stay. And and if they manage to get like a coach like uh, Zidane Zoo. just to make a name, Zizou. sorry guys, Zizou. sorry guys, I I just clicked the button. I didn't have to. Pardon. Okay, we'll we'll come to that later. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't fall. Uh, because sorry that's another that. variable, right? That's another very important variable. So Juventus. Total total mystery. Uh, if Cristiano Ronaldo stays, that that's a story. If they get a new coach, it's another one. They will have a lot of players that probably will slowly fade away. There's talks about Donnarumma coming to Juventus, so it, it can another, be a total yeah, another president uh, as well, maybe another president if, exactly. If they can, exactly. if they get kicked out from uh, from the Champions League because of the Super League uh, mess, and that's another rumor. I think yeah. he's not gonna go away from Juventus. I think he's gonna go away from this planet. Like right away. <laughs> yeah, I heard that he was like, talking you know, with uh, Elon Musk. Uh, and they were talking about yeah. SpaceX to be the new sponsor. <laughs> and then it's going. I heard that. So, I heard that. Time I mean, on, long... the... <laughs> on, on the rocket ship. On the rocket ship. Yeah. <laughs> long story short, uh, the situation of Juventus is really one to watch, and it's very difficult to make prediction at this stage. Uh, my yeah. colors, which are not the ones that I'm wearing today, of course, but yes, Mason they and are. I... Come on, show your true <laughs> self. Show your true <laughs> self. I will, I will in a minute. I will in a minute. Um, yeah, ourselves. AC Milan, it's, uh, it's also very difficult to make a prediction because Ibra by himself, yeah, it's not going to work. Uh, Ibra showed this season that he can play maybe half, a little bit more of the games in a season, and especially if we make it to the Champions League, knock on wood, uh, we will need some serious injection of fresh forces. We need a striker that can fill his gap, and that is nowhere to be seen. I think we, we talked about that last month. What, what is uh, Renato saying here? <laughs> Renato is the voice of truth. The fact that Matteo is not out of Barney makes me think that he's always been an undercover Bausha. Now, Renato, you need to explain what a Bausha is for our non-Italian and non-Milan-born uh, Followers, because yeah, us, basically. Bausha. <laughs> exactly. the Bausha for in Verona, I think, is uh, the salivation of the dog. I'm just gonna oh. say that. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. the variety of Italian language. Uh, I think, but well. um, okay. So AC Milan, yes, there's a lot to, to to see about next season. That that makes me think that Inter might have an easier way, at least in the upcoming season, and then we'll see. However, uh, Diego and Carlos, you hinted at something very interesting that happened during the week in the Serie A, because we're going to welcome with open arms an old acquaintances of Italian football next season, right? So I can share it now. Now I can share it. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> Allegri. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Hey, never say never. Never, never say, say never. Because, yeah. So, guys, this is did the you news say, of the week. Did you just say with open arms? With open arms, I would say yes. Honestly, for the for the sake of Serie A, yes, I'm, I'm happy to see the special one back. Me too. I, for me, it, the question for me the question I, is: I, I, I do not. Is uh, he still the special one? Because the no. last five six <laughs> seasons of Mourinho, I don't know if he's still the special one anymore. Well, but the, where were the last seasons? Uh, so let's talk also about that, uh, uh, Carlos, which is an interesting point. A uh, uh, competing Premier League. Is one thing competing in Italy is another stuff. So one of the issues that surely he will have uh, is a similar situation that uh, Carlo Ancelotti might have uh, uh, had uh, in Napoli. So we know at that point, you know, uh, Ancelotti came to Napoli and he found like, okay, uh, I need to get rid of uh, that player, that player. This situation needs to change if Napoli wants to grow. Uh, the difference between uh, Mourinho and Carlo Ancelotti is that uh, Mourinho is coming to a, a club which is completely new. It's completely new a club, a new ownership. Uh, uh, they came players. and they're already new players. Uh, it, it's going to change uh, in a lot of ways. And he's going to, you know, uh, he's not coming from... Uh, um, a team, uh, the Spurs, uh, uh, which is a winning team. Uh, oh, that's nicer, Matteo. Um, but surely, my Premier self. League is too, ma too many AC Milan here. Yeah. Oh, that, but that's <laughs> better <laughs> than uh, <laughs> that's better. <laughs> so, from that point that of works. view, Carlos, I believe uh, the competition in Italy is weaker than in the Premier League, uh, and therefore Mourinho could do something better. 
uh, then I don't know. He won the last time five years ago with uh, United. I think he won uh, uh, the final yeah, the, UEFA Cup. The Europa League. But, you know, winning the Europa League with Manchester United is... is I don't know. Is well, that it's success? easier. It's easier. It's probably easier than, uh, you know, going to the Champions League with Roma. Uh, in the four uh, four positions, uh, uh, Atalanta is a strong team. Uh, let's see if Gasperini will stay. Napoli is going to change the coach. Uh, Juventus might change the coach. Might might change the president. Uh, AC let's Milan, forget, purely we don't know. And let's not forget I, one factor: mean, is the is the first time in his whole career he's going to coach a team that is probably not going to play in Europe. So it's going to be just the just the Serie A and the the whole year. That's going to be. Because Mourinho is obsessed with uh, Champions League, right? And uh, for him to to sign with a team that he's not going to be in Europe, that's that's interesting. It's very interesting to watch. Of course, I don't think any Roma supporter or president or anybody expects to win the Scudetto next season or anything like that. But and let's remember always, Mourinho. The maximum he stays on a club is three years. So he's not going to think of rebuilding the club with youngsters and young players for uh, seven, eight years. He's thinking in a very, very short term. He's never been in a club longer than three years. So, I don't know. I don't know if he's the guy, is the right guy to rebuild from scratch a club. You know? I do agree well, with Carlos. Yeah. And I would say that uh, I think that they are aiming uh, not to Scudetto. Roma is not aiming to Scudetto. Maybe there might be yeah. voices of, of that. But uh, uh, being with the feet on the ground, I think that they're not going to aim to that. But for sure, they are aiming to get back in the... In their Europe that counts, no? So I think that that's the Champions. the real goal. I think they want to close up the next season in the first four positions. And guys, let's also yeah. think about it. I mean, that there's no coach that stays in Roma for more than two, or three seasons, no matter how well they do. Uh, something always happens. Think about Rudy yeah. Garcia, uh, Di Francesco, Fonseca himself. Uh, Roma is a very difficult place to coach because the the passion that the city has for this team is so visceral sometimes. Uh, the, the, the tension is always up. There's a lot of stress. So I don't think, yeah, that they brought Mourinho, they, they brought Mourinho to, to build a long-term project, but probably just, you know, to give a boost and... Uh, yeah, have a short-term effect in one of two seasons to re- bring the club in the into the Champions League. I think they, they they're not gonna you know uh, aiming at the Scudetto or something like that. They don't have the structure for that at the moment. No, they don't. don't. So. Let oh, yes. let's not forget one thing. Uh, um, when it comes to the squad, the Roma that we have in front of us uh, is a completely different Roma than we will see next season because Roma they had incredible amount of uh, important injuries. Let's only say Zaniolo on top of them. What have would be Roma with all those young players uh, this season, this current season? Because if they weren't able to go so far in, uh, in you know, the Europa League, uh, I do believe they have uh, high quality. They have high chances to meet uh, uh, some of the criteria to, to be a protagonist next season. I don't think as well they will make it to uh, fighting for the Scudetto. Not the first year of, uh, of Mourinho. The, the, the ownership uh, has just changed. So they're probably rebuilding, you know, uh, the brand, they are building the team uh, in any corner of the club. And so, I don't know, I hope they will not be part of uh, even the Champions uh, uh, fighters next season, uh, yeah, but I think they will in the end, because they have the quality, they have the players uh, for doing so. But I have a question for you guys. Can we remove the congratulation to Inter? Uh, <laughs> below? We have done that enough, right? <laughs> yeah, well, congratulations, Inter, you won uh, the uh, next step. So next one campeones, is going to be... Campeones, campeones. Guys, it took, 11 year, it took 11 years. Let's give them yeah. some credit. 11 years waiting for this moment. Yeah, thanks to Real Madrid giving them for free, basically, Akimi, <laughs> The best <laughs> player they have. The best you know, player the other have. day, I know we didn't touch this topic, but the other day against Chelsea, Thank you. I thought about Akimi every single minute of the game. You know, with Carvajal that is getting injured every two days. Yeah. Lucas Vazquez injured, and then it, we have to play with Nacho on the right side. I was thinking, how we give Hakimi to Inter? How? I don't know. I don't understand. I really don't understand. The best player they had this season. 
everyone talks about Lukaku, Barella, but Akimi, the best. Anyway, um, anyway, we should so, uh, talk about some kind of matches that tomorrow night is gonna ooh, happen. Ooh. And ah, I see, so. uh, I see, uh, I'll say, a majority of people against uh, me today. I don't know why. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, with Diego, uh, is a, is a no-brainer, right? No, Diego, no, it doesn't count. Diego is, uh, well, it's interesting. Uh, you know, Paolo, tomorrow mm -hmm. you guys are going to have Orsato, right? Yes. <laughs> I don't striker, know how a a Milan supporter feels about that, but it's interesting that... Uh, I don't 34... know if it's a, as a striker or as a goalkeeper. I would say as a, more <laughs> I, goalkeeper no, I was actually like... thinking more like a left wing. Uh, a left <laughs> wing, because I know that on the left wing, some of the teams are not uh, great this season. On the right one, you guys have Quadrado, which is, you know, uh, jumping is, is on the grass. Play, well, was it not, uh... I don't know. I think it was this Let's look at the lineups, guys. Let's look yeah. at the possible lineups. Please do. Because I don't see any surprise coming on the AC Milan side. Uh, but Juventus, I mean, Maybe. Juventus is always a mystery, right? You, you never, you're never sure about who Pirlo is going to put in the lineup. I think there was not a single time this season that he I you know, lined up the I same 11 players. The same. And that's also due to the injuries. Uh, um, yeah, that's also true. That's, that's also, also true. Uh, yeah. because from that point of view, you, you know, this season, one of the things that uh, is uh, annoying is that the biggest team, you were never able to see them uh, uh, at the, mm. you know, at the highest peak of, uh, of the season. Inter, yes. But the other two, uh, it would be interesting to see Pirlo, if he's a coach or not. Uh, but honestly, I'm not talking uh, in a, uh, you know, I don't know. He never had uh, the full team. Uh, the same is uh, Gattuso. As the team came back from injuries, uh, they were start winning. So you're like, okay, so was the real injuries the issue or is it just that Gattuso is not a good uh, coach? Mm. So from that point of view, well, Gattuso is going away, mm. luckily for us, but that's another story. Mm. So the lineup... Here, show up, show yeah. up the lineup. Oh, you, you want me to show uh, something? Oh, yeah. guys, I'm sorry. I like you. I oh, have, ahead, uh, I have there. If you have a good source, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, uh, uh, I have them uh, here with uh, who scored today. We, I was checking who scored. Uh, so the lineup is uh, uh, a classic for the both of them. Uh, the surprise could be um, no surprise. The surprise could be no surprise. No surprise at all in AC Milan. Uh, no, 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 here yeah. back as a as Quadrado a central playing. defender. Oh. In Quadrado is playing for Juventus, yes. But other than that, again, AC Milan. This is the best lineup that we can put together at this moment. By now, Romagnoli has lost his uh, spot as a starter in the middle of defense, so it's going to be Simon Kier and uh, Fikayo Tomori. Uh, Usual uh, uh, double pivot with uh, Benacer and Kessi, and then uh, Hebra supported by Salemakers, Chalanoglu, and uh, Rebic. Again, that, that's the best we can uh, line up at the moment. And I'm glad that finally for, I would say this is the most important game of the season. I'm I it. think it's for still Milan. on the 18th of May, the most important. Uh... Oh, that's true. I mean, we also have Atalanta. Yeah, true. Yeah, but you know, have Atalanta and day. they have Inter. And Juventus yeah. have Inter. Yeah. And, uh, I think it's even be though it... the first of the two, the first uh, of a series of important matches, I would say, for both of the uh, teams. We cannot for... miss one of the matches. And actually, this, I think, is the most important because... In a scenario in which we were gonna end up in the same, uh, I'll say with the same points, uh, we want to remember that the, also the direct uh, match is the one that counts first, right? There you go. Uh, yeah. It's uh, yes, uh, it is the first thing. The, over, uh, yes. the first thing. If, if two teams are, you know, uh, level on points. Yes, the, the the direct match up will be a tiebreaker. If there's so this, this is, is not a generic goal difference. It's not the generic no, goal no, no, defense. No, no. That's, the second, that's the second in the yeah. direct match, if I remember. Correctly. In the direct match, though, Carlos, not yeah. in the uh, in the whole league. Oh, I so it's it not the general overview. I thought it was the generic uh, goal difference of the year. No, 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 no. 
Yeah. You know, in uh, if because like the situation now for the Serie A, it's uh, uh, with a lot of teams, uh, both for relegation and also for the Champions League for the Euro positions, uh, uh, with the same points. And when it comes to Darren match, uh, I think Napoli is the, uh, the up. Uh, against uh, AC Milan and Juventus, uh, but then when it comes to Atalanta, uh, and also against Atalanta, for example, Atalanta we won and we lost, but for the uh, differences of the goals, Napoli is upper one by one. But uh, that's one of the things. But uh, Paolo, I have the... a question for you. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, I wasn't saying that. Actually, the, the worst case scenario well, here is a draw, which is also one of the most uh, likely to happen according to our predictions. Yeah. And uh, that's going to be painful for both of them because Atalanta uh, can go away. Napoli and Lazio. Could, Napoli uh, and Lazio are like back there as holes. They want to, as like lions, they want to attack. So the worst case scenario here for both teams will be a draw. A, but yeah. who is going to lose today is going to lose some track as well on the yeah. run for the Champions League. Go ahead with the question. It would be amazing for me to be. Uh, I mean, I don't even know for Napoli supporter for Napoli what's better, uh, because it's uh, surely if we win today, we will be playing today at three o'clock against Spezia. Winning today, we can uh, pass by uh, both Juventus and uh, draw. Uh, I think Milan. is the best for you, no? Uh, I don't know, you, you know, uh, Paolo. I, I don't know because then Juventus will face uh, uh, Inter. And AC Milan will face Atalanta as well. So mm, I don't know if I draw right? now. No, it's it's in, a, in, a, in a couple of matches. So matches obviously, yeah. Napoli needs to win uh, all the games, uh, all the matches. Uh, besides that, uh, we just need to win all of them. And uh, there is not, no excuses. Uh, it's extremely interesting this year for Champions League. But I, I'm looking now, Paolo, the, uh, the lineups yeah. of uh, uh, expected lineups of Juventus. I do not understand why uh, Pirlo, and maybe you can help me, uh, is always playing uh, uh, in the four of uh, midfielders. And why is Juventus not trying to play, in, uh, and they're playing home, for example, with the three forward, you know? So to get uh, Cristiano Ronaldo on the right side, uh, Chiesa on the left side, uh, and then you have... I would uh, like really to answer to you, but uh, as I'm saying since the beginning of our series of Bus Sports, I really don't understand what is the way um, oh, he is <laughs> playing. matches. Nobody but does. As also correctly, also correctly uh, Matteo said before, it's always something new. So, or, or at least almost something new from match to match. So it's really difficult to give a feedback on this. No, I, I, I would really like to have an answer for this, but uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't know why. I really don't know why. Maybe, maybe you just miss uh, uh, Pjanic, Artur, that, that kind of player in the middle of... Uh, that's for sure. Uh, that's for sure. That's, uh, the, 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 you know, you don't have to play like Yeah, because Bentacur is one of the keys the, 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 uh, the, the play. And yeah. because looking at the, 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 the uh, lineups like this, it seems like uh, that Pirlo is giving space to Danilo because he gives more equilibrium, you know, it gives more balance to uh, the midfield uh, played in, uh, in that way, you know, as a uh, right wing. And so Quadrado can be more offensive. That's the only thing that I see in uh, this kind of lineup. But I do not understand uh, on the other side, Kese uh, uh, is doing an amazing season since he joined Juventus side. He's playing amazingly, and uh, it seems yeah. to be like in that position, uh, it's uh, uh, sacrifice somehow. Uh, I yeah. don't know. I would even uh, take out uh, Morata, uh, place their Chiesa together with Ronaldo, and maybe on uh, on the other side, I would uh, place another player for uh, or play with the three behind. Uh, I'm surprised yeah. that Kulusevski Kulusevski got out of the team in the last months, and for me, at the beginning, he was the best player of the of the team you know but i think it's just balance uh, you know carlos i don't think he, i really think he's a, a technical choice uh, and tactical and technical choice is not uh, uh, more than that i don't think he lost the place i believe uh, uh the issue this year juventus was in the middle with uh you know they don't have the playmaker hard they were counting a lot in uh, arthur uh but he had a lot of injuries he had a lot of situations that uh, uh took him away from the uh, from the pitch yeah, that's um, why I, I think the only playmaker, like you you say, with that vision could be Arthur. And guys, I think it's going to be a battle this summer to get Locatelli. I can just look at this Milan team. Imagine if you put Locatelli right. there. In, I cannot believe they let Locatelli go. I just cannot believe. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, and, I, and now this this summer they will pay a lot of money for him. Look okay. at Ailis, indeed. Uh, you, you got it right. Uh, also, let's hope it's not just a season for Locatelli, because there is also to say that uh, it's a classic in Italy that you have that great player uh, mm. scoring a lot, but then, uh, uh, you know, not exactly doing what he's supposed to do all the seasons long. Yeah, a bit like Tonali, like what's happening, what's happening a bit to Tonali maybe this season. But uh, Yes, uh, and that's, that's what, what I'm yeah. saying. I'm scary. I'm scary for the Euro Cup. Locatelli and Tonali out. Uh, well, Locatelli obviously is not going to be out, uh, but you know, uh, Tonali was a so bad surprise. Still young, but still I mean, young, but Locatelli, he honestly, young. he has to be in the national team and he has to... Can Milan get back Locatelli or how much... Is there anything in the contract like what Florentino Perez does with the with Hakimi? <laughs> no, no, I'm afraid uh, we 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 soon gonna see wearing uh, a different kind of striped jersey to look at Ellie. The same time Donnarumma. I'm afraid yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. Do you the imagine Donnarumma Donna and Locatelli in Juventus oh. next season? That, that's gonna be. Yeah. Yeah. Donnarumma could not. They two Carlos. different stories. There are two different stories, but Donnarumma could never go back to Napoli, which is his hometown. He couldn't, I mean, he always talked about uh, uh, joining AC Milan because he's a C Milan supporter, mm -hmm. um, because he loves AC Milan, and he's super respected for that in Napoli. Uh, because you, you're like, listen, guys, uh, I grow up as a C Milan supporter, I want to play for AC Milan, and he's always been there. So it's just like, whoa, dude, you know, in uh, this time of the year, this 21 century football uh, is like uh, uh, to admire. But now we are talking about millions and money and he's moving away from Milan, uh, AC Milan. For that, it's like, dude, come on, shut up. Also because he earned uh, six million so per year. That's a question to you, Matteo. Oh, I think more, he earned huh? six. Uh, I don't know, but I think he's a millionaire. You mean uh, so far? <laughs> you mean so yeah, far? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. far, it's six million, six million per year. Wow. And we offered him eight, uh, and he's still, uh, uh, yeah, not happy about that. But yeah. I'm, I mean, why I'm saying it's a different story with Donnarumma? Yeah, it's a whole saga. Uh, Look at Ellie, we basically let him go, and yeah, I still regret that. To be honest with you guys, we probably. We were a bit rushy because he had a couple of low seasons. That needs to be straight, right? Mm -hmm. He had an explosion very, you know, early in his career. I remember that amazing goal against Juventus, which, by the way, I hope is going to be a good omen for tomorrow. But then yeah. after that, he had <laughs> he had a couple of bad seasons. And then we got rid of him. And in, in Sassuolo, he slowly gained confidence. He matured a lot as a player. And by the way, guys, we had an amazing uh, player analysis on the Cult of Culture, so you can check it because it's still showing on our homepage in the player analysis section if you want to know a bit more about this player. Uh, and so now, I mean, he's a hope. He's a hope for the Azzurri. He's a hope for Italian football. And I don't see him coming back to AC Milan, unfortunately. Me so neither. we'll see what happens. Well, guys, before we close, uh, something that I'd like to mention, I think we should all congratulate Empoli, who is the first Serie B team promoted to Serie A. And um, I think over the, first, the next few weeks, we should also be looking very close at what happens in the second division because there's a lot of uh, close battles. There's uh, an amazing battle between uh, Monza the team of Balotelli, of Boateng, of uh, Berlusconi, and so on, and Salernitana, who is a club owned by Lazio president Claudio Lotito. So that also makes it a bit, you know, um, interesting to see what's going to happen if so, so Salernitana is up in Serie A. Salernitana can go to Serie A or no? Because they, they, it was this rule, no? If the owner is, is it the same owner of a Serie A club, could not go to Serie A or something like that a few years back, That's right? The, or no? That, that's the issue, right? And now they are really literally two points away from Serie A. Uh, if they manage to win in the last round next week, uh, they are basically, yeah, they, they promoted. And then, well, then there's going to be a conversation happening. So, but they are, are they legally allowed to play in Serie A or not? No, but they're, they, they're not. Uh, by Fijici, uh, uh, yeah. 
but I, I think that the, the real owner on the paper is not even Lutito uh, on paper okay. is uh, uh, Mezzaroma, right? I think it's Mezzaroma, the name of the... Uh, the yeah, ownership. I can't remember. It's possible. But I think that there's going to be some kibble, some legal kibble that, that will make for them to be in, uh, in Serie A. And that's, it would be uh, cool. Yeah. It would be that's cool. That's not like, for the bait, right? When was the last time Salernitana was in Serie A? A long time ago. Huh? Yeah, Before more than 20 years ago. <laughs> more than 20 years ago. Before Lotito, but the no. interesting is that they're facing Pescara on the last uh, match. You know, Pescara relegated yesterday. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, Paolo. <laughs> you don't want to touch about that. Right? Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, we're talking about uh, Sanitana. I, I hope Pescara will make you know the last three points of the season, uh, uh will be bitter no. three points, but still, uh, do not underestimate uh, Pescara really relegated because, uh, as you might remember, yeah. and as we already mentioned on this passport. In 1993, a Pescara that was already relegated uh, were wasted the plans of Juventus to join uh, the once called the UEFA Cup, yeah, UEFA true. Cup by, yeah. by scoring five goals in a home match. So do not underestimate Pescara. Mm -hmm. Pride. No, I don't, and uh, I I don't believe in Salernitana. Uh, there is, I, I have no faith in I Salernitana. And actually, there's a I, big rivality as well between the two teams, at least between the supporters. So I know. could be, could be that that that's gonna not gonna be like something that we're gonna see in the match. But uh, hopefully, they want to leave Serie B in a in a good way, you know, with a, in a good yeah, way. heads up. So let's let's hope that heads they up. are gonna waste their play. Yeah, just like Roma did from the Europa League on Thursday. What At happened? Any? <laughs> oh, okay. We are not talking about uh, Roma today. Don't worry. We are not going to do that. Nice. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, I mean, that's uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting. So we have a very, very cool football weekend ahead of us. Napoli playing in Spezia today to continue the chase to the Champions League. Big, big, big game tomorrow night. Uh, Juventus AC Milan. That is a six pointer, a real six pointer for the Champions League. Uh, we'll be waiting for the special one to see what is effect in Roma next season. So stay tuned because there's a lot, a lot of things that's going to happen in the Italian top flight. Well, guys, this is goodbye for this week. Always yes. a pleasure to tease each other, to talk about Italian football and European football. Thank Carlos, you. Thank you. Thank promise. you that no one... Thanks, thanks, guys, for not commenting the semifinals of the Champions League. This, this, and, thank you. Uh, ciao, ciao, ciao. But make it a promise. <laughs> Next week, we're going to talk about La Liga, all right? All right. Awesome. Ciao, Carlos. Ciao. Bye, Carlos. Ciao, guys. And, uh, guys, Bye. see you soon, and uh, have a great weekend. A great football weekend. You too, guys. Bye, guys. Ciao, 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 bye, ciao, bye. ciao, 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 ciao.